And how much pressure do you think Benjamin Netanyahu is under? From the US administration? Yeah, and across the world. Well, I, I do think he's under great amount of pressure from the international community and internally as well, especially when it comes to the issue of the hostages. And we've seen a number of demonstrations by the hostages' families um, in Tel Aviv and other cities in Israel where they're trying to get some answers on what is Israel's objective or strategy in trying to get the hostages out, especially considering the latest developments with the death of a number of hostages, either because of the shelling or uh, the three hostages that died because of the shooting from the uh, IDF soldiers. Um, so it is becoming increasingly pressuring for the Netanyahu government, not only to, um, to recover the hostages from inside Gaza, but also to have a sort of an objective um, and realistic objective from what comes from the ground defence in Gaza. And say the children have recently released information saying that more than 10 children a day are losing a limb since uh, October 7 in Gaza. So we've got the humanitarian situation and, of course, the, the hostages as well. Are we hearing enough about the hostages? I don't think the hostages uh, issue is getting uh, much attention in the last two weeks. I think after the the seven days of humanitarian truce where we've seen a number of hostages getting released, the, the issue, once the violence and the shelling went back, the, the situation and the rhetoric in the media and from the Netanyahu government kind of switched into what happens into Gaza and who administers Gaza after the end of the war. So it seems like the discussion has tilted more towards the political question rather than well, what happens to the continuation of the of the fire, what happens with the ceasefire, um, and also the hostages. And like you said, it is a dire humanitarian situation there. And I really need to point out that whatever is happening for the Palestinians at the moment in terms of what they're facing and enduring in terms of shelling, uh, lack of access to clean water, lack of medical facilities and, and food, this is something the hostages will be enduring similarly because they are in the same geographical space, so they are facing the same harsh conditions. And they are in extreme, extreme harsh situations. Um, mm. So let alone, we really do not want to continue hearing about uh, hostages dying because of you know, malnutrition or being shelled, uh, et cetera. So it is a really dire humanitarian situation for the Palestinians as well. So the number of deaths and casualties is astronomical. And it yeah. does urge the international community to try to push for a, a serious ceasefire so that the negotiation can resume. We have run out of time, but I did want to quickly ask you, with your criminology and terrorism expertise, what do we need to look out for in terms of radicalisation and terrorism here and across the globe? So this is something that it is very much something a thing that the terrorist networks can capitalise on. And here, what we're talking about is a specific grievance that is happening across the world, specifically in the Middle East, um, where the international community is seen or some Western governments is seen as standing idle. So some of these terrorist networks will be looking at this and to try to capitalise the narrative where, you know, the us versus them narrative or the global war against Muslims narrative, etc. So the one thing that was, we're noticing in the online sphere and the online space is the continuing discussion around the disappointment, the frustrations by you know young men and women from different um, backgrounds with with their governments, and this is something where the terrorist networks will try to tap on and capitalize and try to use it to mobilize them to say well, this, there's a problem in the governments where you are, and this is where we can offer a better alternative and a way for to offer a solution. So the one thing to to look for is that indication of a switch between Yes, I am entitled to allow to express my uh, my frustration, my political views, etc. But once that that opinion tilts to, I need to do something in order to solve this, and that thing becomes using violence. This is something that we need to look for, especially in a community like Australia, where it houses um, communities from both sides of the conflict. You have a, a you know a very big Arab and Palestinian community, and you also have a very big Jewish Israeli community. So that will reflect in the community cohesion inside Australia. And this is something that we need to look for. Dr. Mariam Frieda, really appreciate your time and expertise today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.